Hey, it's Mike Dooley, and I've been asked to weigh in metaphysically and spiritually on the recent U.S. presidential election. I've got a couple of things, three things that I'd like to share with you. First, to put the whole election into context. We are at the culmination of thousands of years in our march towards understanding the nature of reality. This is the evolution of consciousness. And amazingly, ancient prophecy makers were able to name this time that we're moving through in their prophecies, Book of Revelations, Nostradamus, Armageddon, the final battle. They were able to pin down pretty well when we would be on the cusp of finally emerging into the light of truth and love. This is it. And sure enough, biblically stated, people have been separated like wheat from the chaff. There's the fear, the darkness, the ignorance, and there's the light, the hope, the infinite possibilities. And people don't see any middle ground. This was foreseeable. This is the evolution of consciousness. And now we're on the cusp of an irrevocable march into the light of truth and love. But, but one election is not the talisman of all things to come. We knew that there would be fits and starts, two steps forward, three steps back. We knew that this march would be unstoppable. And we chose as the eternal spiritual beings that we are to be alive right now amongst other choices and other incarnations to be alive right now on the razor's edge of reality creation like this is better than a friday moving into the weekend having a lifetime in the darkness moving into the light we can't even imagine how phenomenally glorious life on earth will soon be. But we're emerging from the darkness and things don't always go the way we think they should go. But they always play out in a way that serves all. We saw the probabilities before we chose this lifetime. We knew it would be a slippery slope, yet we wanted to be part of bringing in the light. Bringers of the dawn. So, don't be deceived by your physical senses as to what's going on. So much more is at stake. This is the second point I wanted to make after sharing the context of the election in the greater movement of our civilization. And speaking of not being misled by your physical senses nor the logical mind, we cannot know, logically speaking, based on our physical perceptions, exactly the best path forward. But this is not a handicap in choosing joy. This is not a handicap in reveling in the glory that you get to be alive right now. Do you think in the times of Jesus that he was like all bummed out because he was born into a world that was ruled by kings and thieves? It's like, why can't I have a democracy? Why can't the masses vote for me? Then I could have a better stage. He chose the light and the love and came here to be an example to all of us. And I am not a Bible toter by any stretch. There's not a cell of religion in my body, just to make that clear. But I can recognize magnificence when I see it. Gandhi in India, did he decide to bypass the, the struggle of the Indian people because, hey, it's not fair. We're ruled by a British monarchy thousands of miles away. Man, why can't I have a democracy? He chose to be the way, to be the light. And we can all still honor our view of how life on earth can be, beginning with choosing happiness in the moment. Think not that it even matters who the political leaders are. And that doesn't mean don't vote. You know, Words applied to truth always slip and fall, fail. I'm doing the best I can to paint as clear a picture as possible of your power in the moment to choose joy, to choose love, to turn the other cheek, to not let an election define you or define the rest of your life or even define where humanity's at. We knew it would be like this. We wanted to play and here we are playing. Again, we can't know what will serve us best. 
A note from the universe once said, simply and always wish for the best for all involved. And then no matter what happens, know that your wish was granted. Sometimes we stumble and fall and curse about it, thinking it was the worst thing that could have happened in our own private lives only a few years later to recognize that it was one of the best things that ever happened in our entire lives. What if, hypothetically, excuse the, the huge leap I'm going to take right now, what if, for those heartbroken, Kamala was elected? We'd all be kind of Oh, everything is, we, we'd all become quiet back in our lives and not be pressing forward, holding the bar even higher right now. And what if, as the first woman elected president of the United States, she felt this unfair pressure from a male-dominated society to be strong and to be tough, and therefore, given the, face, the faces of adversity facing the world right now and the United States, what if she decided to be stronger against some of the tricky leaders out there in the world, whether it's Putin or somebody else, and she actually facilitated bringing about a, a huge war? Or what if she had been elected and the other side, driven by claims of fraud and a dishonest election and conspiracy theories, actually resorted to violence and hostage taking, splitting our nation even further, facilitating perhaps even a civil war. Maybe the quickest, shortest way to light and love would be for President Donald Trump to return to office, not necessarily for any logical reasons, but because at a deeper level, the universe machinating all of the desires and hopes and aspirations of civilization at large would create such steps and a lightheartedness and softball with Putin and others that a war would be averted. Meanwhile, other lessons would be learned, hastening all of us to choose the light over ignorance and move forward quicker, faster than we could have with Kamala. We don't know. We can't see what circumstances portend. But we can know that whatever shows up will serve us. And that, that while you should still have your preferences, don't put off your happiness for their manifestation. In fact, while you have preferences, until your manifestation shows up, there are undoubtedly lessons to learn. Lessons dealing with choosing joy and love right now in spite of the distance yet to go. Because you can have love and joy in your life today, no matter who is in office. Contrary to appearances, and I, and I can imagine the resistance to that statement, you can choose happiness and love right now, and this will more quickly bring on the dawn. The third point that I wanted to make is simply to remind you that life is awesome and yours is precious. Nothing will ever change that. You have power unimaginable. Your thoughts become things. Your words give you wings. Every day you are pushed on to greatness by legions in the unseen. You are a spark of the divine with all the power necessary to move mountains and rearrange the stars of your life. You don't have to be here now, living through the darkness into the light. You get to be here now. You've got life. Many on this earth today will not live to see the sunset. You've got life before you infinite possibilities before you, self-discovery and self-realization before you. You have the world spinning in the palm of your hand. Don't give away your power to circumstances. Celebrate who you already are. Celebrate the inevitable dawning of truth and love in planet Earth. Celebrate every single human being that's now alive and see the divinity that's in you is also in them. 
we all, no matter who you voted for, need to understand this choice always exists and that there will always be a million more reasons to be happy in any given moment than not. And whether you voted for Trump, you're going to see he's not going to change your life in the ways you think. Whether you didn't vote for Trump, you're going to see that it's not going to matter who's in office for you to make this choice. No matter who you voted for, choose happiness, choose love, choose respect, choose gratitude in every moment of your life. And more reasons will be given to you every single day. This is not the end of the world. This is not how it's going to end. Hang in there. Enjoy who you are. Find out who you are. And prepare to be astounded.